So before I go anywhere else okay, right now, I want to make it very clear that I am not trying to uh, appropriate any dirty culture. I am not some myself, but because it's so uh, prevalent and religious for them, I just want to make that clear. Um, I'm only doing this to present this as something new and different that people have probably never heard before and explain a little bit about what it is. So just so we're clear, um, I will go on. Um, so as I said, for the Sami, the, the yoik is a very religious thing. It isn't always just religious, but in the beginning it was a very uh, part of uh, their religious um, um, ceremonies. Uh, would have been overseen by what's called the nalavi, or a, a shaman uh, of that time. And they would have probably accompanied it with a drum. I am not a shaman, so I am not accompanying with a drum. Um, because again, that would be a little bit more of a cultural appropriation that I'm not ready to step over that line. So, uh, I am not accompanying myself on a drum. Uh, the traditional Sami Yuik nowadays doesn't use the drum anyway, so it kind of fits in there anyhow, although there are some who do. Um, per my personal preference is not to do that because that just takes it more closely to the shaman uh, side of things. Um, so, the, the Yuik being a very religious uh, Thing. The, the yoik originally was meant for the Sami shaman used the, the song, the, the trance-like sound of the song, um, to literally put himself into a trance, or herself into a trance. It was a means of communication between not just the people of this world, but the people of the other world, or creatures of the other world, um, and so it was literally meant to transport you to a different place. Sometimes to the point where the shaman would actually die in the middle of this this situation. Um, so it, it is quite wrapped up in that. It's not quite so much today. It's more of a, um, a cultural, um, how shall we say, rah rah sami sort of cultural thing nowadays. Um, but it was back then much much more prevalent as a religious thing. Um, there are several sort of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? ritualistic things that go along with it. One of those things is that Asami believe that the, the yoik does not belong to the person who does the singing. The yoik actually belongs to the person or thing that is being sung. And when I say being sung, I notice I didn't say being sung about, um, because I'm not singing about this person, I am singing this person into existence. So if this person wasn't actually in the room, my yoik is, is meant to bring them to you. They also don't believe that a yoik has no beginning and no end. It continues on infinitum, just waiting to be resung. Um, so while I do <coughs> obviously have a start to this thing, and I obviously have an end where I, can, I stop singing, in your mind and in your memory, it will continue. And so it will continue until it is sung again. Because this piece does not belong to me, I have already sung the piece. Had I not already sung the piece, this would not be an issue, but I've already sung the piece. So for the pro purpose of today, it's already out there in the atmosphere. Which means the person who I'm singing about, I've actually written this piece for my mother, who's sitting in the back there in the corner. Um, so I actually have to ask her permission to sing her yoik again. She's never heard it, but I have to ask her permission because it's already out there. Is it all right if I sing your yoik? Very much so. Thank you. Um, so I did write this piece for my mother. Um, one of the other things that the Sami do is they, ha they tend to have a lot of um, uh, double meanings. And so I titled this piece Mother, but it's entitled, it's intended to represent both my mother and our mother. Um, I do not speak Sami. Um, I did, however, translate this into Norse Sami with a whole lot of trickery <laughs> um, and using translators online and so on and so forth um, and learned pronunciation from there. Sami is a really, really complicated language. Um, and it's very different than any of the other Scandinavian languages that I, I am familiar with. Um, but I could not do a yoik in English. It just just doesn't work. It doesn't sound the same, and it just it's not a Sami yoik in English. So so I had to do this in Sami, which meant, as I said in my documentation, I'm pretty much insane. Um, so so I've written this piece for my mother. Um, it's very short. Uh, the verse. Uh, verses are very short, or the lines are very short. Uh, they're interspersed in between the lines of singing. Um, unlike with songs that we usually sing today, where we sing a verse and then we sing another verse and sing another verse, the yorks tend to either be all completely nonsense, 
or there will be a word here and a word there or a phrase here and a phrase there and it will be dropped in wherever they happen to feel like putting it in. Um, I'm doing much the same. Um, I'm also presenting this, uh, one of the things that a Yoit tends to have is very, very patterns in the piece rather than long lines. They will have short uh, motifs that they can repeat in any order that they wish as they go along. Um, I have written three motifs in there. It is actually in your documentation. However, I will tell you that I wrote it just as the major notes. There is no ornamentation. There's no rhythm written there, nothing. And the reason being, A, the Sami wouldn't write it down, and B, every time I sing it, it's slightly different. So for me to try and ornament it and write down all this ornamentation and where I'm breathing and things like that, it just, it would never be the same. So, um, so it is just presenting, here's the major notes, and that's it. Um, but I do, I have written three separate phrases which you will be able to recognize. Um, and I am switching them back and forth as it feels right for me. Um, I just want to apologize. First of all, I am losing my voice, so I'm going to do the best I can here with this. Uh, and it's going to be a little rough for you, but here we go. <coughs> so this is my Sami Yoik written in North Sami. <coughs> all the way through to 2014, and you can take a look at them if you like. And again, I only dealt with the major notes and not the ornamentation or the rhythm on them. But, um, and sometimes it's really, really hard to find where the different motifs start and end. Um, 
because sometimes they blend them in together too and pick a little bit from this one and a little bit from that one and mash them together. And so it was quite interesting. And then some of them are simply two notes. And there's not, not a lot of variation in them at all. It's a couple of notes. Uh, there's a couple in there that I think are really just one note through the whole thing. Um, but for the most part, uh, they tend to, to jump in between thirds and fifths and so on and so forth. So it's not a lot of scales going up and down and so on. I did have a little bit of that in there. I kind of took the middle of the road of all the ones that I analyzed and went through that way. Um, and, uh, and built this piece around that poem, for lack of a better term. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, that, that's my piece. Um, Again, like I said, it's a very cultural thing for the, for the Sami, even today. Uh, I'm going to go back just a little bit in their history for those who haven't actually read my documentation. Um, for a very long time, the Sami <coughs> were not allowed to yoik. Uh, much like a lot of uh, Native American culture here in, in the United States and in Canada, um, their culture was suppressed, um, especially when Christianity started coming into Scandinavia. Um, the church outlawed uh, yoiking <coughs> and pretty much everything that was Sami. Uh, it was just <coughs> bad and wrong, but yoiking in particular they felt was very um, evil because they felt it was uh, conjuring spirits and so on and so forth. Um, it didn't disappear, <laughs> however. It sort of just went underground. Um, and a lot of people still kept yoiking over the years, so there's a very long history of the yoik. It just wasn't out loud until probably about maybe 20 years ago when it's sort of the culture is kind of coming back and growing and, and, and so yoiking is becoming very popular again. Um, popular yoik now, and I use popular as opposed to traditional, is very different than <coughs> traditional. Um, and that is because they're trying to mash it in with m modern music, which traditional yoik doesn't. Um, and so they're trying to keep it on a 4-4 beat or a 3-4 beat or something like that, which yoik just definitely, generally doesn't do. So that's a major difference between a traditional yoik and the modern yoiks of today. Um, I tried to look very specifically at ones that were traditional, um, even in the ones that were later. In, in Scandinavia, I think it's held in Norway, they actually have what they call the Sami Grand Prix every year, which is, yeah, I know, right? Um, which is a big yoiking competition. Um, and it's actually in two parts. They have traditional yoiks and they have a modern yoik competition. Um, and a lot of them are online, so I was able to actually listen to all of those too. And I found um, at the Smithsonian Institute's website, they had uh, probably about 30 or so um, uh, recordings from 1913 uh, on wax cylinders. Um, yeah, the, the sound quality is horrific, but uh, I was able to listen to those, and it, it actually is quite interesting how even just in the last 100 years, the sound of the oik has, has changed. Um, but it was really, really helpful to, to listen to those, too. Um, and most of those actually tended to be a lot, a lot simple. There wasn't, wasn't a huge amount of ornamentation in them, um, but uh, once some of the things that were very familiar and similar was that they were all sung at full voice, full volume, no dynamics, nothing. It was just full on go. Um, and so that's why I'm singing at the top of my voice there. Um, and uh, yeah. She just flashed the 15 minutes. Oh, did she? Oh, okay. Thank you. Just let you know. All right. Um, so, is there any, any questions that, that you would like to ask me? I'm going to drink this a second. I do, actually. Um, yes. You speak a lot about ornamentation, and as a non yoiker uh, <laughs> but a classically trained vocalist in early styles, um, what is, can you describe the ornamentation? Like, I can look at the notes that you transcribed and get what the main right. melod melody is, but what, what is the ornamentation in that scenario? Most of the ornamentation that I found, especially in the, the stuff that I was listening to and in the one that I just did, uh, was more, I, I don't know how to notate it, but it was kind of like it's a, yay, 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 that kind of, right? Okay. Uh, and I don't know how to ornament, or how to, to write that, but right. there's a lot of that sort of, I, I just call it a shake between yeah. notes, right? Like little um, scoopy Yeah, um, and oftentimes they would scoop in from above or up from down below. Um, but that was that seems to be their favorite, um, that particular kind of ornamentation. There wasn't a lot of trilling or anything like that going on. It was more just these sort of in-between. Kind of like in Celtic music when you're going to repeat a note, you kind of 
put that little bit of a lilt in it to make it a little more interesting. It's kind of like that. Okay. Um, because a lot of these, like I said, there's a lot of repeated notes that just go nowhere otherwise. And so there's yay, 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 yay in between, right? Okay. Um, yeah, which I should mention too, is <coughs> one of the things that makes yoiking, traditional yoiking, so, especially when they add the drum in, it sounds so much like Native Indian music. It's fan, fan, fascinating. It, uh, I keep going, okay, there has to be some sort of connection somewhere way back when. Um, but yeah, it, it's very, very similar. So, yeah. As you've been working on this, um, I know that you're cautious about cultural appropriation, but as you've been working on it, have you felt yourself getting a little trancy and getting lost in Sometimes. some kind of letting that take hold of you? Yeah, and even when I was doing it today, I, I try not to close my eyes when I'm performing, but occasionally it happens anyway. Uh, and that that's really <coughs> me going into that bit of a trance. But yeah, especially when I was at home and I'm alone and practicing these things, um, I would find myself sort of just long into it. And the yoiks don't tend to have a lot of uh, very um, definite rhythm, but you still find yourself finding a rhythm of some kind while you're doing it. And while I'm at home, I usually do this um, and whatnot. But even when I was watching online some of the yoikers, you can't hear a rhythm, but they clearly have a rhythm going in their head because you'll see them doing this. Um, and even as you're listening to it going, no, I don't hear a rhythm in there, but they're still in their own head and going at it. So, so yeah, I did occasionally find myself in that sort of pocket, I guess you want to call it that. But yeah. And do you think that this was solely a shamanistic realm, or do you think that people also, just among their daily chores, out herding or whatever they're doing, also are? Yes. Okay. So. Way back when, um, like back in the Viking times, because this is recorded in the sagas as well, they talk about the Finns and the Samis and their singing. Um, they, they did, at that time, it was a shamanistic thing. However, it wasn't just the shaman that sang. He would actually, he or she, would actually bring other people in to sing with him um, or her. Uh, so it was, and everybody sang. It actually says in one of the sagas, or no, sorry, in Jeffers's, it's in my in my documentation, in Jeffers's book, um, he says that they all sang in their own time, but together. So basically, what he was saying is that they're all singing, but they may not necessarily all be singing in the same key, uh, and so on and so forth. So in those times, it was more mostly a shamanistic thing. Once the Sami started becoming uh, more of the reindeer herder um, um, society and started domesticating the reindeer, then it became uh, more communicating between uh, <coughs> herders. They would use it to communicate with their herd. Um, and it actually says in some of the things that I was talking, uh, that I was reading, that um, the reindeer would learn their own yoik. And so you could call the particular reindeer by singing their yoik. Um, and so it did become sort of a domestic. Uh, thing that you would do, but it was also uh, like, like one of the other things I read talked about a couple of gentlemen who were having a conversation, and in the middle of their conversation, they would yoik to each other, so they'd yoik part of, the, part of their conversation and then go back to talking. Um, so it's kind of a little bit. Of, I know it's strange because it's not something we would normally. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be talking to you and then break into song in the middle of our conversation, but but they do. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they did, right? For them, it was just it was a part of the communication, and um, so yeah. So they do use it for communicating with their herds. They do use it just as they're standing around, smoking a cigarette or whatever, and and you know just entertain yourself. Um, they do some of the things I talked about, where um, or sorry that I read, uh, talked about. You know, I listened to my grandmother who would yoik quietly because it was outlawed. Um, but she would yoik quietly, and that's how I learned how to yoik, sort of thing. So it was a generational thing, too, that got passed down and passed down. Um, today, it is more of a pop culture thing at this point. There are still those that do it, because there are still people who are rangers <coughs> uh, among the Sami. Um, so they are still using that as a communication tool. Um, and much like the cooling I'm doing later, uh, it is a like, long distance communication tool, which is why it's like full voice for the most part, unless you're actually doing it to yourself. Um, but yeah, so it is, yeah. <laughs> so you were talking about the drum and not bringing it in mm -hmm. for your very conscious reasons. How do you think, though, after having researched this, the drum impacts that? 
Well, the drum definitely helps that whole trance-like thing, because again, it's, it's that rhythm, right? So um, you get lulled into that rhythm, and that's what the drum kind of provides uh, during the thing. The ones that I've listened to that where people have been using the drum, um, that's, that's what that was providing, for, at least for me. I don't know about other people, but for me, it was that whole trance-like sort of otherworldly <coughs> kind of sound. It's, it just takes it <coughs> to a totally different level, actually, uh, when it comes to yoinking. Um, much like when you're listening to Native Indian singing uh, and that drum that's going on there, it's just that trance-like beat that goes with it. Right? And do you know if there was one drum or multiple? The things that I have read have all said one. They've never said anything more than one drum, and, and, and they've always referred to it as a Nawadi's drum, so mm -hmm. it was a shaman's drum. Um, and actually, when when it was when Yoiking was outlawed, a lot of the drums were actually burned. Um, and some of them managed to get into museums, so they were preserved, and that's great, but most of them were unfortunately burned. Um, but uh, I did have some pictures in there of ones that were in, in the museum, and so they're quite fascinating to look at. Is on the outside of the drum, uh, the shaman will write history and all kinds of different stories about their mythology and so on and so forth. So that was one of the other reasons I didn't want to bring a drum, is because I don't have that mythology on there, and I wouldn't want anybody to, uh, but I was... So I'm curious about myself. how you interpret this one. Ah, yeah. Okay, so this is out of the book um, by Johannes Schefferus. And uh, what he's describing in where this picture is, is actually this shaman who has put himself into a trance, um, <laughs> has gone into another world, um, and died in the middle of this thing. And so what he describes in there is that he's gone through this trance, he stops breathing, he turns black. And then he dies during the process of this thing, and he never returns from the uh, from the other world. So uh, weird. Uh, but yeah, that that's actually what that was describing in the book. Um, and I just thought the picture was interesting. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. Okay. So, uh, in looking over the note the notes about how the early yoik was practiced, um, you make mention of of your examples from the sagas. Did you differentiate between the yoiks performed by the Sami and the works performed by the volar of the Scandinavian cultures? I did not. Okay. Uh, no, I was just concentrating on the Sami stuff. Uh, I could have taken it into that direction, but that would be a very, very, very long paper. Um, and it's already a 30-page paper, so um, so I tried to stay specifically to the yoik and its, its own context like among the Sami and, and and it didn't touch on that. Okay. So yeah. do you know the work that the Volar did, would it have been different than what the Sami is doing? I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Yes? Oh, oh hi, that. sorry. With the original, like, uh, say for a new ranger herder singing to the herd for the first time, mm -hmm. would that have been improvised, or would he already have an idea of what he was going to sing? Um, some yoiks would be passed down, like you're not, you're probably not going to take somebody else's reindeer and give them a new name, right? So you're not going to yoik, so you would learn that person's yoik. But some yoiks would be improvised, a lot of the time it's improvised. Because again, they didn't write the stuff down, it was all passed down from generation to generation. So uh, daddy reindeer herder is going to teach his son reindeer herder the yoiks that they know. One of the other interesting things about these joints though too is like I said earlier they don't belong to the person who sung it it belongs to whoever has been sung uh, and one of the quotes I used in there was um, you don't sing a, you don't yoik about somebody in the same way that a painter doesn't paint about a flower they paint the flower um, and so that that's a big difference and it it belongs to this person forever and ever and ever I have to ask her permission to sing it again um, every time I want to sing it um, but one person can have more than one yoik, or a reindeer can have more than one yoik. So it's not that there wouldn't be more than one, but it's probably going to be just passed down and passed down and passed down. And so you would learn all these different yoiks. And at some point in time, like your whole village is going to know George's yoik. Somebody's going to start singing about George, and then everybody's going to sing about George. <coughs> Um, and yeah, so it's a community. <coughs> so if the person that is about has passed on, is there some sort of ritual asking? Nope. At that point in time, it's just that song is out there, 
uh, in the ether and it's just waiting to be sung again. So they would just go ahead and sing it. Because again, it's about, it's about memory, so it's about bringing that person back, back to life, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, in front of you. Maybe not in the corporal sense, but memory-wise, they're there with you still. But as long as that person is still alive, that belongs to them and I have to ask their permission. Which is why I ask them. And if I have to do this again, I'll have to ask her again. So. <laughs> So are you talking here about the Northern Sami, are there other tribes that the Yorkie sounds different with? Or? Yes. So the Northern Sami, uh, what you heard from me was a Northern Sami style. Um, the Southern Sami style tends to be very flat. There's not a lot of note um, variation. So when I talked about some of the ones that were in here where there's only one or two notes, those would be the South Sami ones. Um, and that's a huge difference. So when you're listening to, if, if you were to go home and start listening to Yoik's, um, that's one dead giveaway right there. If there's not a lot of <coughs> note variation, it's probably a South Sami piece. Uh, the North Sami were much more ornamented, much a lot, lot greater range, um, uh, and that's the major difference between mm -hmm. them. Now, some of the other smaller tribes, I don't know. Um, most of the things that I've read online, et cetera, and in books um, and whatnot, has all been either South Sami or North Sami. Those are the two major groups. Um, so there's a lot of other little tiny crab tribes like the Kenny Sami and so on and so forth. Um, but how their Yorking sounds, I don't know. I can tell you, however, um, that the Sami from the northern tip of Russia um, does, do do Yorks as well, but theirs are slightly different as well. But I can't tell you what the difference is because I haven't been able to find any to listen to. So all I've read is that they say, it's different than the rest of it. Great. How is it different than the rest of it? Anyway, so that's all I can tell you about that. But definitely between the north and south is a huge difference in sound. Mm -hmm. You mentioned also like yodeling, and do yes. you find it similar to yodeling or not? I do, uh, to a certain degree. Um, I bring in yodeling on purpose because it's the closest thing that we can document in period is yodeling. <coughs> yodeling was meant to do the exact same thing that yoiking was doing without the religious context. Again, like the cooling I'll be doing later, it is a communication device to reach across great distance. Um, so there is a great similarity. Even, even vocally, there's much, a, a bit of similarity. It probably would be more uh, noticeable if it was a man doing the yoik as opposed to me, because I don't have that falsetto up and down, whereas the men do. Um, and so they, can, they have that ability, and so when you hear a man do the yoiking, it would be a lot more noticeable that the yodel is very similar uh, in time. But uh, yeah, I, I correlated it with the yodeling um, simply because of that, the fact that they are, their purpose is exactly the same thing. Um, but vocally, it's much the same as well. They're going to be singing at the top of their lungs because they want to be heard on the next mountain over there. So. Another 30 minutes? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Yeah